Previously on the 348 build, I used a product rarely seen here in the UK, started stripping parts from the car ready to transport the Ferrari over to the body shop for a full respray. But then after the suggestion from you guys that my Japanese imported car could possibly have radiation contamination, I tested it with a Geiger counter. Fortunately, we got the all clear and I then set about redoing the interior but forgot to mention one vital thing. Now I have to confess, I have made a bit of a mistake with the 348 interior, which I'm gonna explain all about in just a second. Um, now earlier I showed you all the lovely stuff that we've had retrimmed on the 348, but I said I've made a bit of a mistake and here it is. I actually forgot to send all the bits off. Um, all my fault, nobody else's. They sat here and now we need to rectify the problem. The issue was I sent off the 348 stuff, the 308 stuff, and these just got left behind. So there is a little bit of saving grace here. The ECU covers, for example, here, all the lever on these is not dry. It's all recoverable. It just looks a little bit faded, dirty, and I think I can make this look really good. Not only that, we have got the uh, handbrake um, cover here that should have a plate in here. So what I've done, so I've just cut this bit of metal down to size. It's going to slot in there. A long time ago, I bought a uh, used or a uh, off cut of lever hide. We have got that here, cut a piece off. We're going to cover that. It's going to look good. And then we're going to color match it to go perfectly with all these bits. And I also bought the seats and the seats are actually not too bad. This one's a little bit better than the other one. Um, so they're just, the lever's fine on it. There's no real cuts or anything like that. So we're gonna also make these look good. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. First up, we're gonna finish off making our panel there for the handbrakes around so we can dye it and match it with the rest of all the kit. Now normally I have a load of little clamps that I use, but I don't know where I've put them. I think I've left them on the 308, so I'm gonna use these. I'm gonna do this slightly different. What I'm gonna do this time is first of all, I'm gonna glue the middle. Normally I would do it all in one thing and just put the clamps on. So I'm just gonna glue the middle now because I've only got three clamps. And then I'm gonna glue the flaps over like this one at a time. And there we go. It's not perfect, but I'm definitely no trimmer. And once we put it in there, spray it black. Well, it's gonna look pretty good. Now I'm just prepping everything, removing these little pins here at the side. Now I have tried to remove this grill here and get one side out, but I can't get the other side out and it's more risk of damaging the mesh here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just tape that up and uh, then it should be good. Now we're going to start working on the seats. First step is we need to give it a good old clean up. The vacuum is coming out. Next, I'm going to give everything a bit of a scrub with some lukewarm soapy water. I'm gonna just towel dry that quickly, just get all the, uh, the really wet stuff off. And then I'm gonna stick it over there to dry in the sunshine. Now look at that, that was a clean towel. This is the dye from the seat. It's coming off, factory dye.
Next step is to wipe everything over with some of this leather prep, which is basically a strong solvent. Now the idea here is when these seats are um, finished at factory, what they do is it will seal the leather with a protective coating and especially really in the seating area here. So what we're doing is we're gonna strip that back so we're down to the lever, so we can rework the lever, re-dye the lever, and then we're gonna reapply a protective coating ourselves. Now, like I say, it's normally on the areas here more so that you're actually seating on, not so much on the back of the seats. So uh, we're gonna work everything, we're gonna do a little bit on the back just in case, and then uh, we're gonna start to make these look really good. Now again, I'm just gonna use a sponge and I'm gonna use this rougher side just to kind of really get in there and remove some of the tougher parts. And straight away you can see, look, this is the black dye coming off already. So that's a good sign, that's what we wanna see. Now you can actually see the bits that I've got and the bits I've missed. Up here you can see just a little bit of a uh, shiny finish still. That is the uh, coating. So it's quite good to do this in nice, bright sunshine. And a little bit down there. Next, we're gonna wipe all the items down with some alcohol cleaner. And get it nice and damp, and get everything a good white paper. Now you might see, just here, we've got a little scuff in the leather. Just there, you can see that. Okay, so what we're gonna do, bit of sandpaper, and we are literally gonna sand that out. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, clean that up with some alcohol, and when I've sprayed that, you won't even see it. All right, and this is where it all starts to get fun. So I've got my little hobby compressor here. We've got our little hobby spray gun. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this up with some color, some black that we've had matched for all the seats. And let me show you. So currently I've got it with some water. We're gonna fire on the compressor and then I'm just gonna show you, I've got a bit of dust here on my, uh, on my glove. It's nice and quiet, keeps the neighbors happy that one. So here we go. I don't know if you can see a little fine mist of water there. This is that's what we're going to be doing on our seats. Pretty cool, huh? Let's crack on. And this is what we're going to be using to spray the seats. This is uh, black. Now we've had this match. We sent our little swatch off from the Ferrari seats to match perfectly. And uh, well, we've got a whole litre here. This is enough to do a full interior if we really wanted to, but uh, it's pretty handy to have some spare just in case. Now we're gonna give this a really good shake. I always like to do a little tester because this is a lot thicker than water. Nice. Now sometimes we have to adjust the little two nozzles there just to get the spray right. As I said, it's a lot more thicker than water. So uh, we're gonna need to adjust it.
So that is the last seat just done. And well, just in time because we're starting to lose the light now. So I'm going to put this inside with all the other bits. We're going to dry it overnight. And then we have got another stage before this is finished. All right, let's head on over to the body shop in the trusty Tesla and see how they're getting on with the bodywork on the 348. Now you can see on the car we've gone right back to bare metal on most of the panels, stripping all of that horrible, horrible, nasty paintwork off. And uh, well, we've done a lot of other bits on here. This is going to be a very nice looking 348 when it's done. So we've also had the steering wheel done, as you can see no longer all cracked up feels absolutely amazing it's got just i don't know it just feels like a better seal all that um it is a little bit dusty because obviously uh we've been sanding the car we've got gaps here where we've had to take off panels so uh, we're getting some of the uh paint dust that is an unfortunate thing that does happen when you are uh, doing this kind of restoration to a car but uh you can see a lot happening in here it's looking great the other thing we do need to address is the roof system here. I couldn't ship it off to the uh, the trimmers because it would have meant leaving the car outside exposed. So we do need to have a look at what we can put up here, either some leather panels. I don't know if it's a single panel or two separate ones. You can see we've got a divider there right in the middle. So uh, I need to do a little bit of research and find out. And then uh, maybe we could just measure it up and uh, have two panels made to match with the same level that we've used for things like the steering wheel. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the way the 348 has progressed. I'm not sure though, I've got a bit of a dilemma. Do I keep the car or do I sell it? What do you think? I've got Nicole helping me behind the camera while Owie's away. My little daughter, she's brilliant at this. What do you think, Collie? Should we, uh, should we sell it? Should we keep it? Keep it, so I'll get it one day. You're going to get the car one day? Amazing. That's a great reason for me to keep all of the Ferraris. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have got a uh, a little bit of a plan here. You see, I'm thinking I'll probably sell this one and change it for something slightly different. And there's something that I've just seen that's really high up on my radar. Check this one out. Now, most people think that I'm a Ferrari purist through and through, but don't forget, I have a Porsche 911, a classic one, and I've owned several before. So when this GT3 popped up, it's similar money to the 348, so it's extremely tempting. So I've run a car vertical in a 2014 GT3. Overview on the traffic light system says we're okay on theft, odometer, and finance, but we do have accident damage history on this one. And we've got some pictures to show that. So we've got clearly some front end damage on this one. Looks like the windscreen has gone. Right side front is where it's really had a big impact. But I don't think it's beyond repair. The rear end all looks good. And on the interior, we can see we've got some airbags that have been deployed on this one. Center lock wheels look great on these things. 32,000 miles on this one. Category S, so it's structural damage but repairable. We've had damage, damage detected twice on this one, so we could get a good bargain on it. So what do you think guys? Should we be swapping the Ferrari for a more modern usable Porsche GT3? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now I've got to say a massive thanks to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. And don't forget guys, if you're looking to buy any car or you just want to simply find out the history on the current car that you own, make sure you run a Car Vertical report. Head on over to carvertical.com and use code RATAROSSA for a lovely little discount. Missing Ferrari roof linings do seem to be a bit of a 
common problem around here. Uh, anyway, I need a uh, little bit of a favour, guys. Uh, I know this is going to be a long shot, but if any of you out there, it's going to be a tiny, tiny minority, have a 348 uh, Targa or even a 355 Targa, I think the roof panel is exactly the same. Um, could you possibly send me some uh, measurements of uh, the material and how big that panel is that sits on, uh, on that Targa top? Uh, and the second thing is, which is kind of aimed at all of you, um, we have an opportunity to kind of redesign that. I think it's just a flat panel, but um, maybe we could do some quilted or some diamond stitching in it. Uh, give me some ideas, guys, because um, we can make this one look a little bit special. Put a little bit of a rat or roster touch on this one. Anyway, drop them in the comments below or send me an email. Cheers. Guys, check this out. I've just received a really cool delivery from a chap called Dave, who, uh, like many of you, in the previous 348 video, I removed a lot of the trim pieces on the car in preparation for it to go to the body shop. Now, um, I kind of used a little bit of a Neanderthal method like this. And uh, well, a lot of you commented on that. Dave went one step extra and uh, well, he rectified the situation by sending me this. Super excited, look at this. Dear Rattarossa, here is a gift for you, so hopefully you won't ever need to resort to using a flathead screwdriver to remove valuable Ferrari badges or a piece of expensive trim ever again. Enjoy. Dave's discovery on YouTube. Well, thank you so much, Dave. That is very, very cool indeed. Uh, this will get used on the 348 and many, many other Ferrari projects in the future. And uh, well, not only that, it also is red, so it matches the car. So massive thumbs up to you. Cheers for that. So it's the next morning and we left everything to dry overnight. Oh, I'm sure you will agree. The seats look pretty good already, as does this, my little panel for the uh, handbrake cover there. Uh, we've got one more stage, let me explain. Now if you remember earlier, one of the first stages we did was remove the factory protective layer with some of this, the leather prep. Now what we have to do is reapply that to protect our seats, which is not so easy in the sense that you need to make a decision on what type of finish is required. Um, we have the uh, satin here, and you can get everything from a matte, a dull matte finish, all the way through to a gloss. Now, I've made the mistake before of finishing Ferrari seats in a gloss. It's very shiny and it looks completely wrong. So trial and error, for me, has come up with this. A semi-matte. So it's not a matte, it's not a uh, satin, it's a kind of in-between. And that is the finish that looks most like the factory finish on Ferraris. And that is what we're going to spray all of this stuff with today. And again, we're gonna be using our hobby gun. Now, the only difference with this is it's a lot thinner consistency than the actual die itself. I'm having a little bit of a problem. We did a little test area and we get a few little white bits, probably where it's just sat around, like giving it a shake, but just to be safe, I'm gonna strain it into our little pot here. Now, usually we'd use something like a coffee strainer or a uh, pair of tights is a good one, but I don't have any around. I haven't been wearing my tights lately. So <laughs> we're gonna use this little kitchen cloth here. And hopefully that'll just get all the stuff out that we need. Now I'm making sure I really hit these areas that uh, get worn very easily with a nice layer or two. Now I'm going to carry on spraying the seats and all the other bits with the finisher until we're all done. So that is all of our 348 interior finished and ready to go back in the car when that returns from the body shop. Super happy with how it came out. I think I've managed to rectify a bad situation of me forgetting to send the stuff off in the first place. Anyway, join me next time where hopefully we're going to get an update on that repaint of that lovely bodywork. Well, the transformation of the really bad bodywork to becoming a lovely bodywork. Anyway guys, until then, you can check out what I get up to on a daily basis over on my socials, and I will see you very shortly in the next one. Ciao for now.